Welcome to the Mana Mama podcast. Welcome to a mother's love. So how are you today, Dr. Joe? I'm doing well. I can't complain i have no complaints i'm in you know beautiful southern california i've got the hummingbirds as you can hear right now <laughs> my ear i had you can see even the flicker of its of its uh, wing you know on my screen there so mm-hmm. uh, no and it's an honor to be here you know sitting next to you here christy through this mm-hmm. uh through this channel that we're, we're we're talking to each other on and uh you know honored to be here on uh on this on this uh, platform with you and, and and honored to share you know what it is inside me that i feel like you know has to has to go out there and you know and and, and find find that uncover mm. that through our process mm. here you know to mm. to uh, people because that's my dharma so uh, i don't have any complaints about that <laughs> boom full stop thank you sir well i am so honored to have you here i have probably 40,000 questions I would like to ask you, but I'm going to stick with the big, biggest picture ones for the people um, because I know you have a lot to share with the people. And I want to start very simply with Vital Harmonics. Do you know the name of your offering, the name of your service, the name you've given to your walk in the world, Vital Harmonics? Now, those two words conjure up a whole lot of wonder. Um, and I want to know from you, you know, what do they mean to you? What does vitality mean to you? What do harmonics mean to you? And together, you know, what is that to you, Dr. Joe, tell us. Yeah, so vital harmonics, there was a process that went into to finding that name, you know, that, that those words to embody the, my practice, essentially, you know, that because that practice, the intention of that is to to bring people to a state of freedom within their bodies, okay? Bring mm-hmm. people to freedom within their bodies, within their mind, within their heart, within their soul, so that they can be sovereign and they can move forward in life and in their, in their direct vicinity, their environment, to embody that which is their dharma, which is their, which is their purpose, which is their uh, uh, expression, their celebration of freedom. So... In my process, I notice, you know, when I work with patients, you know, what is it that I'm actually doing? You know, what am I, what am I doing? What, what, what am, you know, what, what is it that I signed up for, you know, uh, being a doctor, right? So, mm. so I, am I giving people medicine? Am I, you know, am I looking up on, there's a service called up to date, you know, a lot of my colleagues, they use it in the hospital. If they got a question about, uh, you know, a certain dosage of a medication or a certain, uh, uh, protocol of action if a patient has a certain infection or whatnot they look it up on this update they they follow the the rote uh, uh you know recommendations from the evidence-based uh, uh studies you know and they basically like uh you know an algorithm you know mm. insert come out why you know they give their treatment because they don't want to be too far out of bounds of any kind of treatment protocol you know they want to be right online you know so mm. so they got they gotta uh, uh they gotta use exactly what everyone else is doing right so, uh, well, what I'm doing is, you know, sometimes that definitely comes in handy, but what I'm doing is I'm taking that frequency of life, okay, that is, that is resonating in each and every human being and each and every cell of that human being and each and every animal and each and every plant that's that vitality that's universal, okay, that mm-hmm. is a, fr- you know, we, we all choose to live this story of life, you know, on this, on this planet Earth and and it has a certain, it has a certain frequency, okay? It has a certain frequency to it. You know, it has a certain resonance to it. Um, you know, and, and when, when that is diminished, when that harmonic is diminished, and I use that word harmonic because, because there's different expressions of that frequency. It's not just one. There's different expressions of that. So when we, when we find a harmony with that, we resonate with that life frequency okay we find that harmony with it we we resonate with that life frequency and in so we find that harmonic and in harmonic in in a harm in a harmony in a harmonic 
there is there is a resonance there's an amplification mm -hmm. of that frequency you know it's it's a it's a celebration it's a flourishing so that embodies that concept of celebration of life and of what it is that i'm doing in my practice it's kind of i'm just serving as a guide to remind people what is life hmm. you know what what is it in fact you know what is it what is it in fact and 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 reacquaint them with feeling that frequency of life in their own body so when they feel that frequency in their own body when they feel that that they are not separate from this concept that we call life okay that they're not mm -hmm. separate from that we call life they can find within them to start singing their own life song you know in their energy in their movement and the notes that they're playing to sing that frequency is going into my practice the dinacharya the daily life what time are you going to the bathroom what are you putting in your stomach what are you smelling what are you seeing you know these mm -hmm. elements of our experience okay we think that they're happening to us, but we are that, that our whole experience is a poem. It's a melody that we choose. So every person, they have an instrument of their body, of, of their causal body, of their soul, of their astral body, of their mental body, all these different bodies, you know, that comprise, you know, who we are as an entity, you know, as, as, as a human being. Okay. And all these, all these, all these bodies, okay, operate, you know, on this plane of existence and they, and in, in so doing, we can, we can play the different notes of our experience, you know, to, 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 to meet life in the life raga. Hmm. What I do is I guide people to that vital harmonic, you know, being in harmony with that vitality. And it's creating a vital harmonic in such that that person can be celebrated more in their experience where they can celebrate themselves by resonating with life and being a highest expression of life, you know, being a most easeful, graceful, you know, beauteous expression of that life. So that is that is what I what I do. So when I distilled it, that, that's what I do. OK, great. Vital harmonics. Here we go. That's it. And do you know, I love the way um, you akin a, a being in health to, um, you know, a, a, a frequency singing well, you know, uh, resonating out. Do you know, as we talk about this a lot in mana. Do you know that you know, every single one of us it has a soul song? Do you know our dharma or in the Andes, we call it our samya, our essential essence you know is is meant to be broadcast out far and wide and to meet the other frequencies in the orchestra of life in this universe it is all about music and uh, i absolutely love um i mean it, 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 it it's it's right on right like when you come across a really healthy person and when we talk about health we're talking holistic we're not just talking physical when you come across a really healthy person you could, they, like their energy is actually humming and singing very far out of their body it's 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 what you experience right so vital harmonics it's a, it, it says it all it says it all and you know what's so fascinating about your walk, Dr. Joe, is this dual pathway um, that you've taken, you know, in Western medicine, uh, allopathic medicine and you know, in the Ayurvedic science. And, um, and the bringing of those two together, you know, must have been a fascinating a journey, you know, with a lot of challenges, I'm sure, a lot of learning. And I'm sure you've got a huge amount of um, tips, I guess, for, oh gosh, people who you know, who are in the system, do you know, and who, I mean, we're going to talk about that a bit later, I think, sort of, sort of freedom and sovereignty within health. But I'm fascinated to know, uh, you know, when did you decide to go into Western medicine? Like, at what age, do you know, did you find your passion for health? Um, how did you get into Western medicine? And how did you get into Ayurveda? Yeah, Chris, a good question. I want to touch on a couple of things before I get into that. Mm. Right at that, that word humming, that hummingbird came right, right by my <laughs> ear. And something really exquisite about the human voice, you know, like you said, everyone has their song, something exquisite about humanity in general that makes us human, 
is our voice. Out of all mm-hmm. the animals, there's only a couple animals that sing. You know, human beings mm-hmm. being one. To be a human being means that you sing. Doesn't matter what color you are, what what uh, what what gender you are, what where you come from. You know, doesn't matter if you're a lawyer, an engineer. Doesn't matter if you are a uh, uh, you know if you never sang a note in your life. Being human, you are a singer. Hmm. By being a human being, you are a singer. And with your tone that you come out from your mouth in your speaking, because as we speak too, we have kind of a singing tone, Mm -hmm. but even go into your song, that is is a 100% diagnostic tool into where you're at, where your vitality is at. If someone could hear that, you know, and see if you're in key or not, that's as, as good as pulse for me. That's as good as a stethoscope for me. That is as good as an x-ray for me. That is as good as a CT scan for me. It's as, as good as a PET scan for me. Someone's voice. Can I say something here? It's fascinating you bring that up. Just last night as I was dozing off, or it could have been this morning and upon awakening, it was last night, I was thinking about the phenomenon of beings who speak in with a timid voice, who have blockages in their throat chakra for whatever reason. And I thought to myself, do you, have I ever come across an indigenous, do you know, like indigenous who speak? who have that, mecha, you know, they're part of their energetic, energetics hampered. I have never come across Indigenous people, you know, in their environs that don't project, that don't, whose voice frequency does not just stretch out. And I thought, God, this is, you know, we, we, we allow society to get away with so much by labeling people. Oh, she's timid. Oh, she's just softly spoken. No, human beings are not naturally softly spoken. It doesn't mean that we yell and force, but we naturally project, do you know, our frequency, our our song into the space, do you know? So I, I, um, I love what you've said there. It is so key. We are singers, no less. <laughs> That's beautiful. So tell us about your journey. How would you get into these two paths? Yeah, so, so that the notion of, okay, so my father is Armenian in descent. My mother, she's Greek. You know, they're immigrant parents. They came from, they were living in Greece uh, in the 80s, and they came over to uh, the States. Okay, had me in the States. So as being a first generation in the mm-hmm. United States, uh, there's certain type of programming that goes into the, the, the culture there, especially from that part of the world. They actually, they, I'm not only first generation United States, I'm first generation city, you know, mm-hmm. first city. They, you know, my mother was born in a remote village on the border of Albania and Greece mm-hmm. uh, in a stable. She had to. Uh, she had to take uh, uh, water, uh, bread soaked in water, um, while she was nursing because her mother didn't have enough breast milk for her. You know, because they they didn't have the means to eat sufficiently to provide that. Okay, my father was born. You know, one of nine 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 kids in a a, a small town in Syria. Okay on the mountains of Syria by the border of Turkey because his homeland Armenia was no longer an option. You know, Armenia was, is occupied by Turkey currently. Um, and, uh, and they had, they had been chased down there and they're, you know, Christian minority in a, in a majority uh, Muslim area, you know, living with nine kids and ha- having a whole set of uh, uh, obstacles as far as living a prosperous, healthy life. So coming to, the states there was there was that prospect okay of having a child who's in some kind of professional field Mm. so so that that seed that exigency that urgency to have kind of that stability that security in their offspring Mm. definitely Mm. impressed upon me in some kind of okay so me having a proclivity to the natural world to science you know this is the seed was was definitely nurtured but the seed started in me. I was must have been like, I don't know. I was very young. I, I remember I made a business card, you know, when I was in like 
told in, in, in grammar school, you know, saying, okay, Dr. Joe. You know? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> or something like that. Um, you know, and, and from there, it, it evolved uh, as I grew, you know, as an adolescent. Everything was in the context of that. You know, my, all my framing, every single experience that I had, I, it made sense from a very early age that this was my karma, you know, that, that if I can, if I can provide, um, you know, a beautiful service and be a healer, not be a healer, but, you know, be, be there for people, uh, you know, uh, that makes more sense to me than, than trying to get something, you know, from, from someone out of, from a place of greed, you know, I would be doing this regardless, you know, I like to be there not only, do I like to be there and, you know, give from my heart in that way? It's, it's the fact, you know, one of the main things for me was the fact that this is an authentic pursuit, you know, in this time, maybe 20 years ago, 30, you know, 25 years ago, when I'm having these thought processes go in my mind and where I grew up, you know, the middle Midwest of the United States, a lot of times I noticed interactions were kind of surface level. Okay. What do you do? What's this? Yeah. Oh, you know these these things you know on the surface of small talk now my just for the sake of my being my existence what i emanate what i radiate you know my frequency i get into conversations that cut through the bullshit immediately already you know but that's now and that's part of part of the reason for that is my path so one of the things that attracted me to medicine is that the human interactions that an individual wearing you know a white coat has in their daily life is okay, drop your pants, you know, tell me, you know, get, let's get to the heart of things, you know, sure. right away. You know, it's, mm. it's, I don't have time for, for small talk. And, and it's just a, that place of that creating that space, you know, that concept of creation of space did not exist, you know, in, in, in my vernacular at that moment in time. But what I was attracted to is that, that there's a sacredness to that mm. relationship between doctor and patient that it doesn't matter if there's that confidentiality, okay, that occurs. Yeah. There's something sacred between that relationship that nothing can touch, you know? And in that space is, is we've created in our culture through, through, the, through the, I guess you can say, and, and me being a boy at that time, you know, I admired that white coat, you know, I admired, I, 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 I felt admiration towards that. I felt respect towards that. I felt, I felt an aura around that, you know, and it's something that, that was attractive to me, that, that, that sacred space of, okay, all the armor comes down, all the notions and judgments come down and we're having a conversation as two human beings, you know, how am I going to get better? You know, doctor, tell me like, and just that, and I had some key, uh, key uh, interactions with my own, you know, pediatrician or whatnot you know just i observed in my life from doctor figures in my life was just like that disarmoring type of nature mm -hmm. that and that deep just kind of like let's get down to business you know like like let's not let mm -hmm. things stand in the way of that like there's no no fluff here you know mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. was attractive to me okay making a living or having a vocation in an authentic way. So wow. authentic, completely authentic way. And it was either that, or I remember exquisitely, it was either that, you know, having a living as operating as, as that as a vocation, um, just being that in that sacred space and holding that space or just directly to life. Exactly. Putting seed in the ground, and getting the life from the ground like that. It was one or the other, nothing else mm. for me. Mm. Beautiful. And so you went hard, obviously, at school and at university. You just kicked ass because you had that standard set for yourself. You knew what you wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You knew what you wanted to do. And so how did you come across Ayurveda? So as far as Ayurveda, how I came across this, so... Ayurveda, just, you know, Chrissy, it's my, it was my path from before medical school, you know, mm -hmm. this, you know, as my evolution as a human being, 
we, mm -hmm. we come to think about things in a certain way and we approach things in a certain way. And even before getting into medicine, I was there at the fundamental, okay? Mm -hmm. There at the fundamental. And what Ayurveda espouses is an approach using the fundamental wisdom of life, you know, the fundamental elements of life, okay? Mm -hmm. So already my path seed began with Ayurveda. Okay, mm -hmm. steps yes. along the way, the MD going to the university, uh, you know, the medical college, medical uh, university uh, in Illinois, and also all those steps along the way, they were to bring authority to that fundamental seed that was planted in me. So my mm -hmm. getting the MD was, I want to practice in this way. I want to practice from a holistic standpoint and the culture that I was raised in the culture that I uh, was surrounded by there was an impotence surrounding the holistic so I wanted to bring the potency to that with with getting the MD and you know going to medical school I was greeted with uh, a very interesting environment I just had this I had put the medical establishment in a way on a pedestal, the level of knowledge these individuals had hmm. um, that looked up to as an adolescent, as a child and going, you know, my first st stepping foot in the white walls of the establishment there. It's like, okay, I see Twinkies. I see Ho-Ho's. I mean, these are American like uh, <laughs> products. <laughs> I see people dug in the Mountain Dew. I see people on the Adderall and Ritalin and trying to get by the classes. I'm like, and I'm here. I am in the moccasins, you know, I got the, my, my glass, you know, spring water bottle slung uh, neck. And I'm like, all right, all right. I got the upper hand here. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. Mm. That, that, you know, the next four years was my foray into, you know, what they call uh, gunnership. I just, I just said, you know, I got to get, I just was very uh, aligned and, and determined to, uh, you know, succeed in that, in that, uh, the, the comp that establishment so and look you know for listeners i've been on your protocol for a few weeks now um and it's been absolutely incredible and just to give everyone a, a very brief um background uh my intention of having a session with dr joe here was to fine tune uh, my health on subtle levels already being of excellent health I, I could i could feel i just needed my song to stretch out even further than it was and um far out i mean the results are incredible and and you know i think it it does come back to the holistic nature of um of the tradition, I guess, you know, in that, you know, with within the protocol you gave me, you know, we have the breathing, we have the chanting, you know, obviously you have the herbs, you have um, the yoga, you know, the, the, we're looking at, it looks at, um, again, that song within, um, being boosted, I guess, in its resonance in many different ways. A lot of people, you know, when they think of Ayurveda, will think of, you know, food and they'll think of herbs, but it is far more holistic than that. And it is very powerful. I mean, it's very powerful when, when you know, adhered to. And, um, yeah, I just can't imagine, you know, how you feel you know, eating the way you do every day. Let us talk about food. Food being one of my favorite things on the planet. And I am getting very, very excited by watching what you prepare and sensing it and smelling it from across the ocean and just feeling, feeling, you know, the, the song of each of those spices. I mean, that's the, that's the fact is that these plants are masters. They all have their own dharma to heal us. They all have their own frequency. And when you have this orchestra going down in a meal, I mean, you can feel it. You can actually feel, you know, through a picture what is going on there. Tell us about food, like, you know, m the metaphysics 
of food, the metaphysics of of preparing food in the way that you do, which is scientifically, really. I mean, Ayurveda is the science of life. It is science. Please tell us about your passion for food. Absolutely, yeah, Christy. So, yeah, the Ayurveda does provide a, a kind of a logic behind behind what time of day to eat, you know, what season to eat this, you know, what, uh, what kind of quantities to, to, to put in of this, this taste, this rasa versus this rasa, mm-hmm. or what I'm feeling right now, or what my constitution is. Um, it is, it, it is, there's a logic to it. And mm-hmm. moving out more vastly, it's a way of life. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it is, it's not a way, uh, it's not a way of life. It's the way of life. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in order to like, in order to honor the food, okay. As far as, you know, metaphysics and whatnot, we want to extract the most that we can for, you know, and honor that prana, you know, that took that sun in that was watered mm-hmm. that took mm-hmm. that life from below in from the soil. You know, we want to honor all that, you know, what's the best way we can honor, you know, and do puja for the food, you know, the puja mm-hmm. of the food and honoring it, respecting it is, preparing it putting it putting it on with the agni in in the right way with the fire you know of the of earth of preparing the food in the in the kitchen so that Mm. that whole and that whole process is a puja is a ritual okay is a ritual Mm. that we that we are essentially honoring life and by honoring life it takes life takes care of us it's just a simple thing the way of life okay and by observing all these aspects all these facets of life and, 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 and becoming ever more graceful and elegant with it. Okay. Yes. There's a lot of spices and, and sometimes, you know, that's good to kind of bring in the concert, you know, together. And a lot of times all we need is two or three. All we need yes. is maybe sometimes all we need is just one thing, water. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. Uh, and uh, so, so that, so basically the process of preparation and, and the process of mm. honoring the knowledge about the food and the taste in respect with how we're feeling and our body and what we need at that given moment, that whole process of honoring all that with the life wisdom, with the logic behind life, the Ayurveda, mm. okay? That whole process, that is, uh, that is, uh, um, that is the that is the the the, the ritual of, of, of cooking and, and honoring that you know when when we find that we honor um, life in that way I mean it's just reciprocal that's just the, the, one of the one of the laws of the universe you know so oh, absolutely putting the mind and the intention and, and and these things to that then we can operate in a good way for example you know um, you know for example it's a hot summer day you know hot summer day. Mm. It's at noontime, right? We have noon, mm. the sun, hottest in the hottest type of month. Okay, pitta, dosha, this life force, pitta, dosha, which is comprised of that transmutative fire element, okay? In addition to the water, which also has transmutative powers, as we can see the canyon is eaten away by the water, and we can see the fire transforms the wood, you know, into the ash, okay? So that pitta, dosha, that transmutative power is the highest, you know, at noontime and in the summertime. So what can we do, okay, to provide a balance to that, you know, so that we can be in harmony with those mm. elements of life mm. that are born are there, the sunshine, the season, the sun, the moon, like these things are, these things are, are elements in our life that when we're more, more connected to, we can pay attention to and, and eat appropriately. So for example, at noontime, on a hot summer day, you know, a, a, a good meal to eat would be something that has rasa of sweet, of cool, of um, of uh, of uh, astringent sometimes, okay, mm-hmm. of uh, uh, bitter, okay, mm-hmm. uh, uh, different qualities that have the virya. Okay, the virya is the end effect of the food after it's been digested. So it has initial rasa, has the vipak, which are different qualities, rough, hard, cold, hot. And then afterwards we have the virya, which is that 
after everything's said and done, digested, what is the net effect on the body? Okay, so uh, like an herb, for example, like uh, something like um, guduchi, like it's also called giloy. Mm-hmm. It has an initial rasa of bitter, okay, but uh, you know, and the vipak might be dry, okay, and then the the virya is in the end sweet and warming, okay. So that's the net effect that over time, someone taking that is going to have. That effect, so it's going to cool that pitta dosha. Do you know, like, initially I know that Ayurveda or cooking with these spices can, you know, to a newcomer, overwhelm. They can think, oh, Jesus, look at all of this. I remember when I um, first got into cooking Indian food in my early 30s, I think it was, um, and I think I told you I had the most phenomenal, um, beautiful, big, fat, hard cover, hand-drawn, you know, grandmother's recipe book of vegetarian Indian cooking. And, of course, every recipe has got 40 ingredients <laughs> when you're new to it. And you're looking and you're like, fuck, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. And, you know, you had to get your head around it. And it's it's kind of like I I feel there's a um, it reminds me of um, the processes that me and the team run um, the empathic communication processes the one on ones that we do and in training in those you know the teachers tell us master the process first master this science first letter for letter don't deviate from this science. Then when you have it, then you can add your flair. Then you can, do you know, when you know it, then you can move around, feel your own flavor within it, throw a bit more of this in, emit that if it feels good. But to stay true to the science um, really does support. Would you say it's the same with, with Ayurvedic cooking? You know, absolutely. You know, getting the technique down is number one. Okay, mm, yep. getting and it, but it, the thing is, it all that technique comes if you. I'm that's my personality. I'm always, I always go down to the fundamental, fundamental. If you have a good understanding of the elements of water, of fire, of air, of the earth element, in this case, going to be the food. Okay, and you have a good understanding of Agni, the heat. Okay, you have a good understanding mm. the transmutative power of that. You know, mm. that out is conveyed in, in your cooking uh, mm. immediately because you have, you understand the basics of those elements. You have observed them, you know, on yes. a fundamental level, on a deep level, and you've meditated on those elements. Now, mm. when you execute proper technique over and over and over again, undeniably, you will become familiar with those elements. Mm-hmm. So, for example, okay, doing the good tarka is putting the oil on the medium heat okay and and then allowing it to heat just to the right point where when you put the mustard seed in there it's going to sputter but it's not going to burn okay mm-hmm. you, when you put the, the the cumin seed there the jira it's going to sputter but it's not going to burn okay when you have mm-hmm. and have a knowledge of how much the water is going to cool that pan when you put mm-hmm. when you dump the water on there and it goes, steams up, you know exactly, you know, what temperature that, that pan is going to be cooled down. And so when you wield those elements, yeah, that's the ultimate technique. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and you, when you're wielding the other elements, which are the quality, like the, like I said, rasa, virya, vipak of whichever food that you're cooking, you know, those quality, you know, the elements, and you know how they're playing with the element of the agni, the fire of your own Agni, Jatragni in the stomach, then the sky's the limit. Mm. So. You're taking me to Varanasi. <laughs> I'm in Varanasi. In my head, I'm back in Varanasi and I'm walking the filthy, crowded streets just at night time, stinking hot. It's 40 degrees at night. You know, I'm getting pinched on the ass by it's like full on, you know, India. Oh, my God, it's so intense. 
and the street food are just like everything that they are cooking, everything that they are handing you. It's just it's just mind blowing. Every creation just it's a song. Like we, you know, it, it's a song. These recipes are they do actually enliven your spirit the minute you put it in your mouth. You just <laughs> you start stretching out to the stars. Like that's that yes or yes. I mean, anyone who's been to India, do you know? Well, it, the the food is off the charts. I mean, it is not just food; it's magic. Yeah, the, the subcontinent. You know, it's it's right there in front of our face. You know, it's happening in real time. You know, we look at civilizations back, like Egypt. We look back at like uh, uh, ancient Greece or whatever, um, and say, hey, like look at back then. You know, where they used alchemy. You know, and they used this one and that one i'm like that's going on right now you know basma <laughs> combining metals and, and and mercury and gold and this thing to make basma you know to treat people's mm. ailments still happening you know the subcontinent has been curating that forever and it's just under right underneath people's noses it looks mundane just how mm. looking up kangaroos the other day i'm mm. like these are so impressive you know they're so ancient and uh you know so beautiful mm -hmm. so <laughs> and i'm looking i'm like i can't believe that this animal exists on this planet and right. uh but it's underneath your nose over there i'm sure oh my god we can't get them off my parents land they are everywhere alchemy is everywhere and uh <laughs> it's happening everywhere and it's not it's like okay yeah this is our culture and you know it's 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 magic for for a lot of people absolutely i want you now to tell us about fire dr joe because you have mentioned a lot that fire is the driving element um, of your medicine path and I and you talk about Agni. I want yeah. you to t teach us about that and tell us about what fire means to you. Um, and how do you relate to that element? For me, that really presented itself in my practice when I had a, as I was looking towards moving away from um, practicing exclusively, quote unquote, uh, Western medicine, allopathic medicine. Mm. Uh, I sat with um, a disciple of, of Osho and he, he was kind of guiding me in my, in my process. You know, he was uh, telling me a little bit about kind of reflecting to me kind of, okay, who I am. And I you know, was looking at my astrology a little bit, you know, Western astrology and, and these elements of fire, you know, were presented in my, in my chart. He said, you have so much of this, you know, it's, it's there, you know, you need a fireplace to put it in. Okay. Because that fire is that trans." Force that, that, that it's that guiding force that can transmute these these conditions you know for these people to to a place of you know harmony okay yeah. so so that has been my journey is building brick by brick this fireplace to make what i'm embodying that transmuted force accessible and approachable you know for for people that agni is the core and it's so fitting because agni some agni that's part of the definition of health is without agni, good agni there's nothing agni having agni on point and that agni is not just jatra agni which is the the stomach okay it's also reflected in the cell the cellular agni okay the mitochondria has a little furnace that creates the energy atp okay through combustion from the oxygen molecule and also these are things that every single layer of our body, our, of our different bodies, they have different Agni. For example, through Pranayam, through doing Vastrika Pranayam or Bellows Breath Pranayam, you're also, by virtue of that, you're increasing every single other layer of Agni. By increasing your Jatra Agni with the putting a little bit of ginger, black pepper, you know, these are small things there's some practitioners in india they work only with ginger black pepper turmeric that's it nothing else or they work all oh, wow. with bibitaki haritaki and uh, amla that is their 
medicine, medicine, they don't use anything else. There's a elegance is very respected there. I give you a long list of things, you know, I just like, you know, that's my style. Okay. Mm-hmm. But some people, they work only with those small things. And that is to fine tune the Agni because with, when the Agni is high or the Agni is balanced, it's not vitiated, then that ama on the tongue is going to be the, the ama that we see is, is reflected in our digestive system. We look at the tongue sometimes to look at the ama. That is that is going to be in harmony and balance. No, no ama, and it's that ama that is the fundamental um, cause of any kind of disease. So, do most people? I mean, you know, looking at humanity in general, where are we at? uh in relation to agni and to healthy agni we are in a place where there there's an uh where where the imbalance of air and ether element is endemic you know the just the communication that we're having is over that element you know the air yes. ether. travel air travel is is uh you know predominant form of transportation um, there's a lot going on in the airwave, you know, radio frequency, electromagnetic frequency, all this stuff is causing vayu imbalance or wind imbalance, vata imbalance. Mm. Mm. So what does that do? That's what's endemic, you know, as a collective to to everyone. I have that imbalance, you know, that's oftentimes mm. with a lot of patients. That's the first thing that we try to direct is the vayu. Okay, is the wind element, the air ether element to, to move into balance so that things like Agni can be better because that Vayu, when you blow on the fire, it either burns the whole forest down or you blow it out. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, mm. so that's what's happening. There's a, there's, a, there's a dissociation of our essence, our being with that fire because that fire because that 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 attention and that intention on nurturing that hurt within our bodies within every single cell of our being within our soul our causal body okay within our our astral body within our mental body that is 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 that attention is not entirely there because there's that distraction that is occurring that that by you is blowing that agni uh every which way and that's why you know people are going to this bathroom many different times a day that's why we have uh you know different change in the eating habits but getting things in rhythm okay that's honoring the agni it's honoring what that fire needs needs to be fed a log when it needs to be fed the log not every you know not at, at a whim you know it needs to be it needs to when you you know by instinct by intuition when you see the fire at a certain point that's when you put the fuel on there right yeah so so it's with that awareness and with that intention of of, of honoring that rhythm of stoking the fire at an appropriate time when that fire is going to be um, sustainable it is it's going to be uh, warming it is going to be uh, effective for the purposes that we want to use it for that beautiful transmutative power that beautiful clarifying power that beautiful productive power of the mm-hmm. subtle tejas ojas and uh, prana all of this is created mm-hmm. with agni and how does that tie in how in your vision how does having you know healthy agni tie in with a successful um, expression of dharma are they connected agni is completely responsible for clarity of thought yep. agni is com- responsible for uh, motivated action you know right. so for pitta dosha predominant have that constitution of the fire water element predominant you know like yourself uh chrissy mm. that that provides a support and a higher capacity for that Agni to create the transmutation of thought to action. Ref- yep. That fire outside, you know, that stirs the fire within us. The first step of digestion is the cephalic phase. You know, the first step of digestion is the cephalic phase. It, the, the mind itself is the first thing that will increase Agni. 
Mm. You know, because when we're excited, you know, by something, by something, by beautiful, something beautiful, or something that smells beautiful, tastes beautiful, or that looks beautiful, you know, that beauty is giving us a reason to be alive. And Agni is life, you know, mm. Agni is water is life, Agni is life. Okay. Fire is life. Mm. That's spark of our, uh, of our being, you know, of our existence that comes from, from Agni, every single heartbeat. You know, that is, that is, uh, that spark, you know, what is that from? There's so, so, so much to be wildly passionate about in this life. Like it just, it's never ending. (laughs) Just if you have a heart to see the beauty of, of mother earth, like it's, it's just this never end. It's a never ending playground. Like there's so much cool stuff out there to, 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 to enjoy and to to marvel and you know we talk about that a lot I talk about that a lot you know like a lot of people over many years have constantly asked me you know like I don't know what to do with my life I don't know my dharma I don't know my purpose <clears throat> you know a lot of people and that may be you if you're listening I, like a lot of people I don't know what to do do you know and um and I get that question a lot. I wonder if you do, but I've never, ever had any doubt about what I'm here to do. And it's I've always been thoroughly directed. I've never once thought about it. It's just <clears throat> a path straight ahead that I d- never falter from. Um, and so that's why a lot of people ask me that question, I'm sure. And, you know, my response is do what you love make a list of 20 things that you love to do they have you know they should have nothing to do with career <clears throat> do you know or you know it's got to be serious no like if it's crossword puzzles if it's walking dogs on the goddamn beach if it's making homemade pasta great 20 things make a list of 20 things you absolutely love to do and cram as many of those 20 things into your week as you can. Like literally get out the schedule and freaking cram each, every single one of those things in. And lo and behold, what will happen is that after a while, the messages will come about where you're meant to be because we're vibrating higher when we are doing what we love. You know, when we are passionate about freaking painting or you know going to the cinema we're actually vibrating higher and when we are vibrating higher the messages the silver linings the synchronicities the 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 allies all the things that are meant for us can find us they can't find us while we're bored shitless at home or in some freaking neon lit cubicle in some nine to five freaking, do you know, like it, they it will not find us, guys. Our dharma will not find us while you are ho-hum. So you're better off having fun and forgetting about purpose or dharma. Just have fun. <laughs> That's what I said. Just For God's sake, just have fun because what the world needs now is happy people. <laughs> what the world needs is happy people, right? Absolutely. And, and if someone mm-hmm. finds themselves in cold drums and they're kind of in a state of inertia or stuck or, you know, feeling like in a depressed mood or they put mm-hmm. on a couple sitting in one place, you know, throughout the day at their job or something like that. There are ways through the laws of correspondence by we can bring that passion into them by bringing passion into their body on the somatic level, on the physical level, on the breath yeah. level. So if you breathe in through, you know, the right side, pingala, you know, not pingla nadi. You know, uh, you 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 bring it in from the right side, out through the left side, in through the right side, out through the left side. You start stimulating. You start stimulating that surya, that solar energy, within you. Mm. Okay, out into the sunshine. Okay, you start stimulating that solar, that solar energy that 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 you start sparking that within you. You start putting a little bit more of, uh, you know, a little squeeze of lemon on your food. You put a little bit of uh, black pepper, a little bit of long pepper, a little bit of uh, dried ginger is called tricato on your food. Then that starts enlivening the passion. You start melting away that inertia a little bit. Okay. And then, you know, many people, okay, now I want to pick up my pen and write down, okay, I, you know, what's, what's happy for me because I just, 
I've, I've evaporated away this, uh, you know, uh, dank uh, locker room cloud, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is definitely not hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's it little explosions of passions all through the day come on whack it on the food whack it in the water you know like this is the opportunity guys this is the opportunity to squeeze every drop of blessing and of of, of inspiration and of god actually through the food that we're eating you know and through the breath that we're that we're enjoying you know like you were saying this breath work it's like you, we could breathe or we could breathe <laughs> you know we can eat or we can eat you know like we have this opportunity all throughout the day to recognize that life is ceremony that everything is ceremony you know every single part of it it just all comes down to attitude really it all comes down to attitude i i think um i want to ask you Dr. Joe, about sweat. I read somewhere that when you were at med school, you would gather the students in the sauna for sweat seminars. I, is this correct? <laughs> I love this. I love this. Tell us about this. You're passionate about sweat, right? I'm passionate about ugly. I'm passionate about getting hot and bothered. Yeah. Yeah. The sauna seminar series was uh, something that <laughs> I, I wanted love to it. have a reason to keep people in the sauna as long as possible. You know, always consult with the doctor before you spend too long in the hot, you know, hot, hot, uh, hot places. Uh. But uh, it was a fun way to get my classmates. We would bring in these uh, papers, these long, like, uh, medical papers that were on the sun, you know, how UV mm. rays was photo activating DNA repair enzymes that were required to heal the DNA. And all we hear in medical school is, Oh, UV is going to damage the DNA. It's going to cause this or the other thing, but Hey, you know, that DNA is repaired with the same energy. Um, so it's, it, so if something is being broken down and repaired, you know, that's just a reflection of the transmutative property of Agni. Okay. Came full circle. Here you are, you know, and, um, so, so we'd come and sit. I'd be sweating on our, the paper. We'd get all like the ink. <laughs> and then, you know, like, can we leave yet? Can we leave yet? And I said, no, stay. We have to go through this next uh, page. Next round. <laughs> next round. <laughs> cold water. I got a cold water bucket here, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, people, uh, <laughs> people, it was just a nice way to get together with friends and do something a little atypical for a, you know, a, a medical school. That's very cool. You know, but sweat, you know, is something that we're not doing enough of, it's, you know, and, you know, obviously at Mana, we sweat a lot in Lodge, in Chuluchaka, the Andean Sweat Lodge, uh, Chuluchaka Bridge of Steam. And, you know, you obviously would have some uh, incredible knowledge about how sweat, sweating benefits um you know the health and i'd love for you to share a little bit about that um because you know we know it we feel it do you know we we pray with it and we are challenged by it and we allow it to challenge us greatly to meet our edge do you know to 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 meet that edge and to take us into trance actually i quite often explain two people before we go in you know when I give them a rundown about the the ceremony and how it's going to go down is that <clears throat> I, I liken it very much to trance uh, that once we get in there and and we push against our edges in the presence of sweat and and uh, sorry steam I should say in the steam and and it takes us into deep deep trance do you know and the the healing is profound is absolutely profound that happens with, with sweating um what do you know what can you share with us about what's happening in the physical body when we sweat mm -hmm. yeah there's a couple different lenses that i can approach that question uh, with so the first lens is um looking at through from kind of the scientific western side of things um where that uh, duress, 
that trial that you're putting on the body from the extreme temperature, from the high humidity level of the steam, you know, that is causing a hormesis, what we call hormesis, to occur. Mm. Cells of the body are at an elevated temperature, okay? And our body has a, a, a series of reactions that take place, like we witness when we're having a fever, okay, mm. where body temperature as a whole gets to um, 37, 38, you know, 39, 102, 103, centigrade, not, we don't want to go that high, but, you know, when it gets a little bit higher, those heat shock proteins get activated. There's a cascade that uh, is activated that starts to um, release different cytokines, starts to uh, uh, release different uh, uh, triggers that stimulate apoptosis or uh, program cell death and to senescent mm. cell. Uh, and, uh, you know, so th that, so the refuse of which can be substrate for healthy cells to take in and, and, and uh, phagocytose and essentially ingest, use for energy. And it's a, it's a clarifying type of process that, that occurs. Um, and it's also a process through that hormesis. You have a, a release of endocannabinoid system, okay, that has its own therapeutic uh, effect and own therapeutic benefit. You have stimulation of the mesenchymal stem cells in the marrow um, that is almost like an internal salve in a way. Okay, that is that is you know somewhat of a panacea to wow. uh, free radical damage and to to places. I'll shift into Ayurveda where there's accumulation of ama. Okay, um. where it's not functioning, you need that sticky quality, that sludgy type of quality where metabolic processes are not functioning with the grace that they're meant to function. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because the body, it, 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 it reverts when it's in a state of stress, extreme cold or extreme hot or whatever have you. It's going to regress to a place where, where, where the core systems are, are distilled, you know, so that so less resources uh, are on kind of erroneous biological processes and more are going towards the core. Okay. Yeah. And those resources are going towards the core, that extra fluff of unnecessary thing it kind of goes by the wayside it's dissolved and when it remerges from that state you have this full flux of cytokine tumor necrosis factor of interleukins that are just all these white blood cells coming out and start picking up the little pieces and you have clarification from the ayurvedic lens that swedana okay that heat especially in the, in the steam and there's and, and there's, it's broken down to, okay, this type of heat, steam heat is good for this. Dry heat is good for this, you know, right. hot, yep. warm, that sunshine is good for something else. And in general, heat in general, we use that as a form of um, priming for the clarification process, the cleansing process. Just how I mentioned that processes move towards the core. Okay, mm -hmm. the torso, the heart, lung, yep. the gut. So what, what happens is um, that vasodilatation, that vasoconstriction that occurs with exposure to heat. You have a, a huge dilatation because when the capillaries dilate, there's greater blood flow at the surface. There's convection that happens and the heat can, can go from the body. Um, mm -hmm. But when you have arterial uh, basic constriction based dilatation you have a flushing of, of histamine that can also occur in the system where that vasodilatation occurs nitric oxide all these things and that creates a uh, kind of a flushing reaction where um, where things like you know toxins metabolic toxins uh, accumulation heavy metal these things can either be expressed from the sweat from the sweat gland itself or can move towards the core because all the bodily function is moving towards the core. So when that moves towards the core, it's moving towards the central elementary tract system. Okay. And it's, and it's, um, and you know, the, or that life force, that energy, of course, as we mentioned that dosha moves towards the central elementary tract system where we can then use something like punch karma to clear it out.
Yeah. It's so exciting to hear that, especially you mentioned this internal salve. What can you name that again? Oh, the internal salve is like the mm. like the stem cells that are stimulated. Okay. And right. the, the the interleukins, the cytokines, the tumor necrosis factor, all these different cytokines, the endocannabinoid, the um the mm. open beat endorphins all of that works in concert as you notice you get out of that sweat you get out of that that sauna you know and all of that is comes back out from the inside comes released into the bloodstream you have still a little bit mm. of basal you know the finish say that the person is the most beautiful 30 minutes after the sauna you know because oh. they have <laughs> I, 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 I cannot tell you the beauty on the humans after we sweat on the Sunday night at our weekender, like, and, and it's not just the physical, they have just dumped a whole bunch of ancestral trauma. Grown men have bawled their eyes out. Like what tumor hasn't hit them? The sweat lodge will get them and bang, crying like little boys. Everything is coming out. And then Sunday night, it's like, we're, it's, it's, I'm you're just with a, a pack of angels. It's actually, you. it's, it's, humans clearer and more golden than I think I've ever seen them is it's it is I think that's medicine like major medicine for me unto itself is just to look at people after that experience like the again we talk about that that song their song their frequency it's like oh look here's a bunch of really healthy humans it's like oh yes yes we can live in harmony do you know like you the human race are born for greatness and i tell you what sweating you know in a really powerful way reminds us reminds us of that like you say when you come out that's really fascinating they say that half an hour huh hmm. yeah that's a tsunami of all those endocannabinoids and those opiates and the nitric oxide that's flushing the skin giving you a nice shiny luster you know all these things and the, where the pores have been cleaned out you know because that's <laughs> that's when it all hits and it's at its peak there <laughs> it's just apps it's golden it, there's actually a golden glow around everyone so do you sweat how do you sweat do you are you in sweat lodge over there joe yeah there's an ep sometimes we go in ep we have medicine sweat you know over here uh you know with the, nice. the american tradition that they do um mm -hmm. i love the song i just kind of keep it basic i, I don't you know I, I i i love just going into sauna you know when i have access to that uh and pouring water on the rocks you know a good wood burning sauna is i think as good as as any you know it's the heat it's universal it's the, most cultures have some way to to get in the hot hot stuff you know because that's they it. knew uh, that's it. <laughs> for me i have the sunshine here you know i just get in the sun get a nice sweat um mm. do some calisthenics do some you know surya namaskar and in, in, in the sun and that is another way of of uh doing sweat on Swing some axes. <laughs> Swing some axes in the sun. That's exactly it. Swing some axe in the sun. <laughs> Look out, hummingbirds. <laughs> Joe's coming out with his axe. <laughs> exactly. I oh, love it. So tell us about freedom. I know freedom is really important to you, sovereignty and freedom. And, um, you know, you have, I mean, I don't know, um, I, I'm imagining up until recently you were working in LA hospitals, correct? Correct. Yeah. Mm, and you, you have left because of the mandates, correct? Right. You know, I could smell a little something coming a little bit, uh, you know, before, mm. uh, before everything got a little bit more stringent with, uh, with different mm. intervention shots and all this. Uh, but I could smell something coming and it's definitely not in alignment with, my truth and my my purpose so it's something that i i found a a, a good avenue for diversion from that mm -hmm. and uh, freedom freedom is is something that you know we say it a lot we we, we learn about it in our schools you know and, and my history our my ancestral history learn about freedom fighter this you know wanting to transcend occupation freedom is something that it has been uh, a prominent program, you know, in, in a lot of our hearts, 
lot of our minds, you know. Uh, you know, George Michael's got a good song, you know, about it. Uh, you know, freedom. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a concept that uh, it's a concept that I fight for every day. You know, with my patients. Yes. It's a a. Uh, it's it's an, it's the expression of life. You know, uninhibited, unencumbered. You know, that's that's what that's what freedom is. It's an expression. It's that it's that celebration of life. You know, it's no one it's no one putting a damper on that. You know, no one putting a a, uh, a, a damper on that gong or that symbol, you know, let it ring, you know, let they say, let freedom ring, you know, you want it to, to, to carry, you want that song to carry, you, you know, because any damper on that is uh, suppression of life. Okay. That's, that's synonymous. Any, any, any dam on the river, that's a suppression of life. You know, water needs to flow free, you know, that's freedom. You know, any, any, uh, any, any uh, asphyxiation of that fire, you know, is, is a suppression of that life. You know, that's, that's, that's what I fight in each and every day with each and every of my patients. I fight for their freedom, you know, that, and, and I, I try to nurture my own. So these things on the psychic, the psychological level, okay, with mm. restriction and with, and with not honoring mm the energetic of love and the energetic of celebration and the energetic of peace and prosperity and trying to damper that with um, intellectualization of little intellectualized uh, boxes of formalities of how to express and how to uh, operate and, and, and uh, shame essentially bringing in a, an energetic of shame uh, to the mix. This is a, a direct assault on to freedom as we know okay so, but mm -hmm. not more because freedom is synonymous of life it's a direct assault on life itself it's a direct assault on health itself and people who can recognize that it's crystal clear it's obvious you know yes. it's crystal clear people who are in alignment with life it's crystal clear and obvious people who are have an abstraction mm -hmm. from life and have been intellectualized into a dissociated state okay mm -hmm. where they where life is a perceived as a concept rather than an experience okay for that type of paradigm yeah. that type of that type of mindset the safety is in the dissociation because it takes courage it takes embodiment of the heart courage you know from the french heart to it takes courage to embody life and not just think about it yeah. Okay. But, but, you know, that there's a, there's a, there's what we're witnessing right now is a deconstruction mm. of, or a, a deconstruction of life itself out of that fear to live. You know, we all signed up here. We all signed up, you know, we signed the dotted line to be present in this reality, to experience that harmonic, that frequency, that, that spark that we call life. You know, we all sign up here to be free, but there's a, there's a, um, there's a virus, if I can use that word, there's a virus that has created a rift between the embodiment of life and the intellectualization of life as an abstract concept. So you, it, it touched me deeply when you said that you fight every day for your patience you know, for, for, their, for their freedom, like that's what you fight for. What do you see are the main things that you are, like the main um, hindrances to freedom? Like what, what are those main things that you are standing up against, you know, for humanity to, to, to find thriving health? What are they? What it comes down to is any kind of barrier that gets in the way of that full expression, that celebration. And that is oftentimes a fear that comes from a, a area of darkness, of shadow, you know, of, of, uh, mm -hmm. of awareness, lack of attention, of shame, of, of 
pain, of hurt, of aversion, okay? Yeah. When we don't take in a, a look at these things, we are either not aware of them or we are um, apprehensive of the embodiment of this, okay? And, that's, yes. and that, that is what creates the weaknesses within dosha to then have the totality of samprati, which is the disease process, to take place. So that is, that is or when I'm having an, inter, an, an interaction with the patient or having at the core of it, you know, I ask all these questions just to tease out where is mm. the fundamental apprehension? Mm. Where is the fundamental apprehension? And that apprehension, mm. product of shame, trauma, guilt, uh, the problem uh, is a is a is a, uh, an ex- is a is a reflection of lack of awareness of what ha- what have you know. I try to find that apprehension because once that choice is made, that initial choice is made to embody that celebration of life, then okay, then we can start to move the light to it like that a little bit. We can start to move this obstacle out of the way and and with the help of for example an ally plant that's been around has been living singing the song of life in a sattvic way for uh millions of years okay here take <laughs> let him take your you know follow him in this way you know mm. and and uh and then uh you know lean on this this way burn up you know that what is not serving and then okay we have a we have a we have a path on which we can walk on to uh, to that full expression, full celebration. We're aware of a little bit of some more things, and we're able to now observe um, the life around us, which should be our rubric. You know, the life around mm-hmm. us, and also that inner reflection of the life within us. You know, that source mm-hmm. that energy, so we can. When we can observe that, when we're not clear, we're, we're not clouded from that anymore. We can observe it. We can listen to its song, start singing along with it, you know, and that's, and that's, mm-hmm. and singing along with it, becoming in such resonance, such harmony with it, then becoming a full expression of that. That's the actualization of that. Far out. I so highly recommend that everyone jump into session with you. I want everyone listening, please, to do yourselves a favor and jump into session with this man. I, you know, like I, I'm a big believer and I mean, it's kind of a bit of a no brainer that, you know, we want to work with, be guided by, take inspiration from people who are embodying the very qualities that we're looking for. And if that is radiance, I tell you what, like (laughs) you're the man. Do you know you are the man for the job? Do you know, like, I, I, it, 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 I just, I can imagine how much it frustrates you to see these public health advisors who are like ashen faced, obese, you know, like it, it, it's just the wildest joke on our planet. Do you know that this is like, like I, I just, it, yeah, it has to be, it has to be a comedy, surely. This has to be a comedy, do you know? But, you know, really, if we're going to look toward, you know, someone who can guide us in hell, find the most radiant practitioner in your field, be the hummingbird, go over to that flower and drink. So please, family, (laughs) I'm telling you because it works. It's really good stuff. Um, And I, um, I would just love to hear what your vision is, Dr. Joe, for humanity. Do you know, like if you, I don't know, let's beam ourselves, I don't know, 30 years into the future. Mm. Let's say it's, uh, you know, 2052. Mm. What would you love? What would, what would you, what would your dreaming be? What would you love to see, you know, and to feel happening with humanity and its health? Oh my goodness. Well, mm. uh, that's, that's a beautiful uh, vision to you know, direct me towards, you know, it's not often that I, I take the opportunity or take the moment for myself to think about that. And uh, you know, what came mm. to me 
democracy is just how we have, we're an organism, you know, we have, our whole body has, has different areas within the body, okay? Mm -hmm. Just how our sex organs have a different function than our, our Manipur, our solar plexus have a different function than our heart, have a different um, function in our throat, you know, that act of living and that expression of life within us is a ritual in that maybe in the morning we have we're going to the bathroom okay we're having a bowel movement and you know in the evening we're making love you know we're with our heart you know we're in the in the in the, in the afternoon time we're singing our song you know this is kind of the ritual of life mm. you know? and and my high vision for the earth is to respect all the different qualities of the earth and and celebrate their uh celebrate the the, the geography you know and celebrate the natural migration mm. of people of animals you know my vision is mm. for all animals to be able to go where they where they need to go no fences in the way for that you know where people to to you know all the mm. water go where it needs to go you know um where uh where where the people you know they can they can live in abundance and in accordance to that life wisdom that we're embodying we're talking about right now effortlessly you know and gracefully you know where there's no there's no suppression of that life force where celebration begets celebration is amplified in resonance to even a higher celebration expression of life of of you know skies that are clean of the water running fresh and clear so you can drink it of the you know the vegetables growing you know big and strong you know that that uh of all that abundance of that deliciousness i'm building my appetite right now you know my ugly for this vision you know that's how they say if you're if you're healthy or not how's your how's your appetite you know doing um yeah i have i'm, I'm noticing that come up in me because it's so appetizing you know this vision it's uh mm. it's something i wish to see uh where you know that it's it's a i see movement you know throughout throughout the the earth in ritual and i see effortless movement in that i see lack of isolation i see the or, or organism of the earth breathing as a whole you know that way and uh and of course that that up that we've uh, that we have uh, created on this planet, you know, it needs to it needs to be transmuted, you know, through our our love, and it needs to be transmuted through our our caring attention, through uh, caring for those processes that the Earth has, and reverence for those processes that the Earth has to clarify itself. So uh, and supporting, you know, the Earth in that way, you know, seeing that that beautiful garden that that uh that we have been put on this planet to to steward you know we've, we've been giving the faculty as human beings of the dexterity of our hands of our feet of our minds to to garden this earth and then we've been given the voice to sing about that is such a beautiful prayer and vision and i'm sure we are all joining you in that we'll all join you envisioning that it's so important to share these visions so we can all add our energy to it, add our vision blueprinted up together. And that's a really powerful one. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Dr. Joseph Hanovnikian. Thank you so much for coming into the Mana Kitchen and, and sharing your heart and sharing your your passion and you know, and for being a true doctor. I just want to acknowledge you and thank you for actually being true to the path when so many are not. And I know that that is, has, you know, it's a big walk um, and it has challenges and I'm, I'm sure you, you faced them beautifully. But you guys who are doing the right thing by the profession are not getting enough acknowledgement. And so I just want to thank you for being the real deal, for being a true doctor, that we can all come to safely 
and get, you know, true and authentic guidance to come back to thriving health. Thank you so very, very, very much. Oh, I appreciate that, Chrissy. Yeah, it's, well, it's always wonderful mm -hmm. to spend time here with you, and uh, and thank you for those words, and thank you for offering this platform and for documenting, you know, conversations like this. So. <laughs> Oh, it's been so lovely to talk to you. And um, yeah, we'll put your links underneath this conversation. So if anyone wants to book a session with you, they can do that. So thank you once again for being with us.